Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a midday market update for Friday, December 14th, 2018. I figure this is about as good a time as any for a video today. Um, on rightsideofthechart.com, I did post a couple charts, um, both public content this morning, just uh, earlier, a couple hours before the market opened, I posted the, the futures charts, which we're looking at here, and then I followed up with QQQ and SPY after the market opened. So just a quick look what's going on. Uh, you know, nice down day today so far. And when we look at uh, S&P 500 futures, that's what we're looking at here. This is ES, uh, the 60 minute chart of ES. Well, I'm trying to circle that and it's up there. Um, but as you can see, we have a downtrend line that comes off the highs over here uh, back from looks like early December. And um, we broke out above that down uh, downtrend line a while ago. Now we're coming in for a low level back test. We had one back test here and we've been crawling along there. So we're below that 2625 level. Um, still, I think a very important level for the market. Um, I didn't expect it to get breached again. And I look, this can go either way. Uh, I'll just kind of share my thoughts. I still, I still favor uh, that uh, there's very little downside in the market. Now we may get a flush out move, that flush out move that so many have been calling for and looking for, that may come. Uh, but this is still anybody's game right now. Uh, the SPY, let's make no mistakes about our ES and SPY. They're in a precarious position because they're now below that support. We've been below there a couple times. Uh, I suspected that was a flush out move. Uh, the fact we're breaking it again is not good. Usually when you get a bear trap, a uh, flush out move, that's it. You don't look back. You don't retest those levels. Uh, and you have more buying. So I just want to say this thing can go either way now. Um, you know. I just, but the thing is, I don't think there's much downside. At least it's not worth it, in my opinion, uh, uh, as far as adding swing shorts at this point in time. And I mean, if you're an active, nimble trader, you know, and you short a break below that level, or if you were short uh, and you trail your stops, you're okay. At this point in time, the ES has no business going above today's high. Let's just say that, uh, if that bearish case is going to play out. But uh, I would not write this market off yet. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple things that I'm watching. So there's ES, and again, uh, in a precarious position now if it recovers 2625 that would be uh, somewhat bullish but we've traded really through there all day so let's not make too much into this level of what happens intraday uh, if you followed here I'll show you real quick the uh, intraday charts here uh, let me grab a chart uh, let's look at the spy and you can see we've chopped around all morning. Let's look at QQQ. That's the index I'm more interested in right now. It led the way down. I'm looking at the tech stocks. It looked pretty much sold out uh, or close to being sold out to me. And you can see we've, you know, we gapped down, but all morning it's just been a chop fest. And we're moving lower. So you got you to gotta look at that and respect that. We're down 1.65% on QQQ. SPY is down 1.5%. Uh, uh, there's some one minute divergences, but again, the, the daily charts and 60 minute charts take preference right now to these uh, one minute charts. There's the 263.15 level. I uh, still think that's a pretty important level on SPY, and we're below it right now. The day isn't over. I laid out a scenario yesterday and recently that uh, if we do get one more thrust down, and that's all I think it is. Let me just digress here for a second. Um, if you followed me for a while, it was sometime uh, late summer, I believe. Uh, early fall that I mentioned uh, for the first time in in, in, in well many years uh, moving to a uh, out of equities 100%. I moved into all cash, uh, full cash position in 401k money, long-term money where I don't have the option to short. It's actually my wife's 401k. I have you know on my own business I have a SEP IRA. And you can do whatever you want in there except short, but you can short with the leverage ET or inverse ETFs and things like that. Uh, but in in a lot of 401ks you don't have the the option is short so I had moved into cash and then when I became bullish on bonds recently we just had a trade on TLT we closed out got in there the right time uh, rode that ride up recently in, in treasury bonds and um, so you know year to date I'm actually positive where the market's down in an account you can't even short and that's just uh, that's what I call tactical asset allocation and as I mentioned recently cash has been king and that's one reason I moved into cash there were no opportunities um, made a tactical trade on treasury bonds and I wanted to say this but for the first time in a while I'm starting to now move that money out uh, transferred some of that money out into uh, various stock 
uh, index funds, uh, small caps, mid caps, large caps, international, the usual stuff they give you in uh, you know, most 401k plans. Uh, and, and I'll continue to scale. It's no, by no means a full position, but I did you know take a, a, a starter position. So I'm starting to scale for what I think will be a bear market rally. Now, where I'm going with this is so we look at risk reward. That's what it's all about. Um, your markets are looking ugly today, and maybe we get that waterfall saw off and that meltdown move. Maybe we come in and test the, uh, the early 2018 lows, these two reaction lows right here. Um, but the way I view it is the downside I see is limited being too... You know, three, maybe five percent, maybe a little bit more in the tech stocks, which have a little more uh, volatility. They tend to move more, although I think QQQ is largely sold out. You can't say completely sold out. We don't have any strong buy signals or anything. Uh, that's what I'm looking at, risk reward. So uh, to get in, to start scaling in now, no matter what happens today and next week, uh, and as I said, I think if we get a flush out move based on what's happening today, that we're testing these lows again, uh, or not the lows, but that that you know, two, we'll call it 263-ish support is being taken out in SPY. If we're going to have a flush out move, it should come, uh, especially if we close down red today, we fall through to the downside and don't reverse, which is still very much a possibility, guys, very much. Uh, if we don't, we'll probably have that flush out move next week. I have to imagine if we have a big red close today, um, markets will probably follow through early next week and then it should be over. Uh, I'm sure like a lot of people, I'm, you know, are wishing this is over. This has been a multi-month grind. That's the bigger picture here. Uh, you know, almost all this correction so far occurred on this initial leg down from the early October lows to right here. You can see we're still trading right now. Uh, there's a candle there that's kind of cut out in this chart. I have a volume bar that's over it. Here, let me do this, and then you can see it. So I put a horizontal line right there on the crosshairs, uh, that low back there. We're still above that low. So here it is, bigger picture. Uh, if you look at where we bottomed back in on October 29th, we're still above that level, but it's been a sideways trade, and there's been swing trading ops between. But again, this correction is so far... From this point, it's only been, uh, you know, a correction in time or so than price. We've had a couple rallies, so that's it. And then bigger picture, you know, you just look at support. I try not to get hung up on any one single number. The volatility in this market is very high. So there's not any one number that I believe, well, if you're below this, we're going to crash and have a big, you know, slide down. And if we're above this, we're going to rally. It's not that simple. Essentially, you're looking at uh, roughly three uh, triple bottom lows. And uh, again, because this is a period of consolidation, a solid impulsive break could give us that flush out move. Um, hey, maybe there's more than two, three, four, five percent downside in this market, but I, I, I don't think so. I'm just looking at the charts. I'm going to show you that right now. Why I, why I don't think so. So there's uh, the 60-minute chart of uh, SPY. Same levels I've covered before. If we do rally today and recover 23.15 with conviction, we rally up. I'm still looking for a move up here. You can see the levels. You know, 26.09, uh, 269.09. I'm sorry, would be our first stop uh, on a, on a reversal if it comes soon. And uh, from there, probably a reaction and then a move up to that 273, 72-ish level. Let's look at QQQ. QQQ is still at support. Remember, the Qs uh, led this thing down. It was all about, in the beginning at least, it was all about the FANG stocks, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, all those big guys moving down. And uh, so far, this is still the low back here in um, mid to late November, but I think it was November 20th. And uh, at this point, we're making higher lows in QQQ. Uh, that may not be the case if we punch on through here, but this is a pretty significant support. I've mentioned it recently, uh, 162. Uh, a lot of reactions on that 162 level. You can see a uh, gap right there. It pretty much contained most of the this this uh, the initial drop there. We had a little spike through it, but that's where trading normalized. So that's the level I'm watching. And if it goes, it starts to get thin below there. There's certainly some support if you take that reaction low from the 29th, I think it was, uh, draw a line through there. Uh, we have another reaction low there, and that comes in at roughly, and again, remember there's, uh, I don't think there's a line in the sand number, but if you want to give it that QQQ, um, I would say it's at right there, about 159.40. And so let's watch what happens here, and I'll here I'll add that level now, so let me keep it on the chart and see what happens. 
And if we do get a washout move, and again, I'm still leaning towards, uh, you know, as per my comments this morning, I'm still leaning towards a, a successful defense of this level. Um, but I can tell you, my convictions aren't high. We're, we're here at support. Uh, so many people have been clamoring for a washout, washout move before going long. And the fact that we've been trading sideways now for months, maybe that's what it's going to take. So, um, um, again, I don't think the risk reward on swinging down is worth it, worth the, um, you know, the getting caught, especially if you're swing trading. Remember, today's Friday. Any swing trade positions you put on today, you have to be taken home. Uh, if you're going to swing trade, you go home through the weekends. You have two extra days of overnight risk. Uh, we'll see how we close today. Anything can happen. But uh, like I said, I'm still leaning towards uh, uh, this being the last test. Wash out the last of the weekend of longs right now. Maybe recover today. Suck in a few more shorts. And then uh, move down like this. Uh, it would be my worst case scenario, I should say. If, uh, if, the, if those levels I just showed you on QQQ get taken out, this is about the downside I see. This, here's those lows. If everyone wants to see a test of the 2018 lows, personally, I think, you know, that's initially what I wanted. But then when everybody else wanted that, um, that kind of shied me away from that. Um, and I still, you know, like I said, anything's possible in the market. We can slice on through there because what I, you know, what I often say is if too many people are expecting the same thing, if everybody's looking for a move down to retest the lows, one of two things will happen. You'll either reverse shy. Uh, which is my preferred scenario, and so far we have done that, but it's not over yet. We're still not, can't say this correction's over, or you undercut it. Uh, rarely do you give everybody what they want. It's just not how the market works. So that's that. And if we do get another flush down move, and let's say it comes in somewhere around that 153 level, you can see there'll still be divergence on the um, uh, RSI and the PPO. That's QQQ and SPY daily chart. Here's what it looks like. Again, we already had divergence on the recent lows. Maybe we want to come in and test it. There's still plenty of room to keep those divergences intact. As I said, these are what I call potential, not confirmed divergences. You have the PPO is pointing lower. That's a momentum indicator. The RSI is pointing lower. Uh, they need to reverse. You need a bullish crossover in the, in the PPO to confirm these divergences. And uh, we haven't seen that yet. I can tell you it would happen if we get a good reversal here, like I you know, suspect may be the case here soon. So let's just keep an eye on that. And then finally, let's talk sectors real quick. Um, uh, let's let's start with uh, the big one, XLK. Uh, I said, you know, all along, you know, as this market was hitting new highs uh, and I had this trend line, I said the market won't break until tech breaks. And, you know, I said it clearly when tech breaks, the market breaks. And that was it. And there was your sell signal right here back on October 4th. That's when XLK broke down, big red candle, and boom, that was it. So tech took the market down. Uh, tech so far bottomed, what, you know, started this correction uh, so far has ended on uh, November 20th right there with that candle. And we're still above that. Doesn't mean we can't take it out. And as you can see here, if we do, we'll have divergence in XLK. We don't have it. We do have divergence on the RSI. And, you know, all along I had a max target zone down here, about 61 to 62. And again, Again, so it's our risk versus reward, RR. Uh, so for in tech, and that would be a pretty pretty big move, is about four, four and a half, almost five percent down to maybe uh, about what is that? About six, a little over six percent from where we're at. If we come down and flush out into my target zone, um, but. Uh, like I said, I'm leaning towards the defense here, and uh, well, I think we'll see that target zone sometime, uh, probably in 2019, that's my guess, uh, maybe after a bounce first. Uh, so that's that. Oh, and by the way, I'm, what I'm doing here is really going through just the top components, not all the sectors. So there's, I haven't updated these recently. These numbers probably have changed a little bit since the correction, but this was, is, and has been the largest sector in the largest uh, yeah, sector within the S&P 500 at about 21%. And by far, it makes up about 60% of QQQ. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on, uh, of course, on tech stocks. Uh, what else is dragging this market down lately? Finally, uh, industrials are playing catch up. They're significant. They're about 10% waiting. But you can see we have nice divergence here, just like in the S&P 500. Uh, divergent low. We can come on down just like the S&P 500, make a new, uh, uh, you know, another new low and it'll still be a divergent low not confirmed divergence yet you want to see this ppo turn up but that's pretty powerful stuff so again i'm looking at um you know the market most likely being very close if not already at a bottom and then we have of course let's see xlk xli and i wanted to cover the financials um 
financials have looked like death lately. Uh, they've been pulling the market down, but they're building some big divergences. And I have XLF coming up on pretty nice support. This is a support zone. I should give you the numbers here. About 24 down to about 23.86. So we'll call it 24 to 25. Um, if we get there, that that's my max downside target. I think it's pretty decent support for XLF. We're getting we're very oversold, bullish divergence, everything else. So uh, I'm expecting a, a pretty nice rally here soon. So look, here's the long end of it. I am still looking for and leaning towards a December rally. And I think at worst case, I, I think, and this is just my guess, if we're going to get a washout move, it'll probably happen with a red close today. If we can't recover, reverse today and close this thing green today, and we close down, you know, pretty big red day, I'm talking 2% plus on the indexes, then we probably get that washout move, maybe gap down next week, flush out. But I really think that the end is getting close here. Uh, hard to say, you know, we've been in a multi-month trading range, but that's my guess. So whether we have another, you know, two, three, four, even maybe 5% washout, I think it'll be quick and get over with. So therefore, you know, I'm starting to scale into, in my long-term accounts, you know, IRAs, 4K, stuff like that. I'm starting to scale long for the first time in, um, well, the IRAs, I can trade more tactically uh, in the uh, 401Ks. That's hard because you can't short, but um Either way, that's that's what I'm moving towards. And again, I'll, there's room. Scaling in means a little today. And wait to see how we're going to close. If you have a 401k, keep this in mind. They usually have, you usually have a cutoff. Depends on the fund company or your 401k company. Usually about 10 to 4. You can't drop an order in right at 4 o'clock. They need time. But what, what, what I'm getting at is it doesn't matter whether you put a sell or a transfer order in at 9.30 in the morning or uh, 3.30 or 3.50 p.m., because uh, it's all going to fill that day because foreign case hold mutual funds and they price and they, you know, what, what, no, doesn't matter what point in the day you buy it. That's when they start moving things over. All right. Uh, let's I think this is it. Let me just look at the chart, see if there's anything else I wanted to cover. No, uh, that's pretty much it. You know, again, I'm, I, you know, the S&P 500 is more of the market because it has financials, which QQQ does not. You have energy stocks, things like that. It's much more representative of our economy. But uh, Qs, are, that's my preferred trading proxy right now. That's what I'm trading. And uh, I'm watching this 162 level. And what I see so far, we had a low of 162.06 on that candle. So successful defense so far. A low of 162.08 on this second 60-minute candle here. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, so uh, if that goes, like I said, last, we'll call it, I hate to use that word, last chance uh, support there at 159.46, but give or take. And, uh, you know, maybe a flush out move. But uh, right now I'm looking 60-minute trend indicator here is still bullish just slightly above the zero line. And uh, let's just let's just wrap it up here. Let's just see what happens. Um and again, as I say, if you're not sure what to do, the market's been just swinging around all morning. Stand aside. If they do pound out a bottom today or early next week, there'll be plenty of time uh, to catch the uh, next rally to the upside. And if you are short and you want to stay short or try to short, uh, you know, a potential three, four, five percent, nobody says there can't be 10 percent more downside. Uh, just, you know, trail your stops. Um I like futures because you can get stopped out. I was taken out last night, you know, and, and that's for futures trade around the clock. Uh, or QQQ, you're subject to gaps like today. Uh, you go to QQQ. If you went home long QQQ uh, and you had a stop loss order anywhere, let's say below the lows, you would have been filled. A stop loss order fills at the open. They turn into market orders once the stop price is crossed. You would have been filled well below your stop price because we gapped down over 1% today. Stop limit orders will only fill at the limit price, but guess what happens? If you have a stop limit order, say right here, and you gap down to right here, nothing happens. You're still in the position, and now you're even more underwater um, because the stop limit order never filled. So again, stop loss orders fill as they're turned into market orders once a stop price is hit or exceeded. Uh, so in the case of a gap, you're going to exceed that, and then you have a limit order at the open piled in with everyone else's orders. And if there's a fast-moving market, sometimes you don't even get filled right away um, because that order has to wait in line. It gets queued with all, you know, all the other orders. So uh, that's that. Uh, so we'll see what happens, and I'll do another video uh, for sure, some type of update, maybe just static charts uh, at or around the close today, or a little before or a little after the close, depending on what's going on. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.